This video is made possible by Practical Defense Systems, the best online security training at the lowest prices. You can start your security career today online at pdsclasses.com. Check them out. Hi, I'm Joel Persinger. I'm the Gun Guy. Thank you very much for all of your support of Gun Guy TV. I'm very grateful. Earlier today, I had an opportunity to talk with Chuck Michelle from Michelle & Associates about the victory that we just had in Illinois against the assault weapons ban that they were trying to stuff down the throats of gun owners in that state. You're really going to like the news. So we'll get to that interview in just a second. I just want to remind you, if you wouldn't mind, to check us out on these alternative locations. I'm trying to get to 250,000 subscribers on YouTube and 10,000 over at Rumble. So if you wouldn't mind, like, subscribe, and share the video. Now, let's go find out what happened in Illinois and talk to Chuck. Chuck, thank you very much for joining me on such short notice. I appreciate it. Uh, here from the crazy classroom we've got in Mission Valley. We've had a victory in Illinois, it sounds like. What's going on? We sure did. You know, there's been a lot of challenges filed to the Illinois' uh, new law that bans hundreds of firearms and, mag and a lot of different magazines uh, by mischaracterizing them as assault weapons or high capacity. And... Uh, there's been some wins, some losses. Actually, there hasn't been any wins till today, but today we had a big win. Four cases in front of Judge McGlynn down in Southern District of Illinois Federal Court. Uh, and today we got an order from him granting our requests for a preliminary injunction, blocking the state from enforcing this new law. And so he granted that. The injunction is in place. And uh, the state will certainly appeal. In fact, they'll probably file a motion to stay the injunction so that the law remains in effect, I have no doubt they'll file that by Monday, if not sooner, uh, and we will oppose that. But in the meantime, uh, it's a fantastic win. Uh, we will be in the Seventh Circuit, uh, and we will have to litigate the, the case through on appeal there. And in the meantime, the case continues in front of Judge McGlynn towards a judgment. This was not a final judgment. This was a granting of a motion for a preliminary injunction. But the, the point is, that the, the beauty of it is, that the judge got it so right. Uh, he, he understood what Bruin said and Heller said. He got that analysis right. And some courts have really tried to kind of twist that to achieve a, 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 some kind of a result that upholds a state, state laws. And that's not just in Illinois. But Judge Malin, you know, it's amazing what a different perspective a gun, a, a judge who, who owns a gun or knows something about guns gives you. They, they know when the state is saying certain things about, uh, you know, how a gun works or, or, or why a gun is dangerous or different types of, of, of technology or capacity or magazine capacity. Or they, they know because they've been to the range. And so they call the state on those kinds of claims. And that's what happened uh, at the oral argument. And, uh, and the judge just saw through all that obfuscation and got to the to the gist of it factually and, and, and legally under the law and ruled it in our favor. So uh, we just have to hang on to it now, but it's a, it's, a, it's a glorious, glorious win. You know, this issue has to be resolved across the country, not just in Illinois. And uh, I expect we're going to see some good wins in California before too long. Uh, yeah, but I'm hoping for those. I mean, we keep waiting for Judge Benitez, for example, to issue whatever rulings he's going to issue. I begin to wonder if he took a vacation and it's <laughs> never going to do it. But, uh, but that's all right. I guess we'll take the wins where we can get them. You mentioned four cases. What were you talking about? Well, there were four different groups of plaintiffs that filed four different lawsuits against the Illinois, uh, Illinois new law. They were all consolidated into one case, basically, in front of Judge McGlynn. And so uh, there were, you know, there were uh, half a dozen, almost a dozen lawyers uh, involved on behalf of all those different parties in those four different cases. But uh, the, the, the opinion applies to all four cases because they were consolidated. So the judge's ruling uh, is a win for all four. Does this have an effect on other states like California and their assault weapons ban, or is it limited solely to Illinois? Well, this only addressed the Illinois statute. Now, so it doesn't have any binding effect, but the analysis, the legal analysis that the judge did, the way he applied the Bruin test was spot on. You know, it's supposed to be, 
you look at the text of the Second Amendment, does the conduct that a person is involved, engaged in, holding an AR-15 or holding any other semi-automatic that they tried to ban, is that bearing arms? It's supposed to be a simple question. Almost every incident involving a any firearm, any firearm, and all the accessories, magazines, pistol grips, uh, uh, stocks, uh, uh, everything, including going to the range, is all covered, comes under the, the language of the, the plain text of the Second Amendment. If that's the case, then the burden is supposed to shift to the state to prove that there is some historical justification for the law that's being challenged. If there is no historical analog, they call it, uh, in other words, a historical law that existed that would give you an indication that the founding fathers who, who wrote the Bill of Rights would tolerate the modern day law. If there is no corresponding historical analog, then the law is unconstitutional. And, and if they're in common use, if any particular firearm or, or, or class of firearm is in common use, that's supposed to be the end of it. Because the people get to choose, not the government, the people get to choose what tools they want to use to defend themselves and their family. And that's true of semi-automatic uh, rifles and all handguns and, 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 ma and magazines of whatever capacity um, and, and all the accessories and parts and going to the range and everything that goes along with it, marksmanship, everything that goes along with it. How can some of these judges justify the legal gymnastics they still want to, you know, bend their bodies into? and the law into to try to get past this. It seems very straightforward and simple to me. Well, they don't stop at common use, which they should, but some of them don't. And then they go on and find, like they're saying that a Bowie knife law, which, which didn't ban the possession of, of certain demon, demonized knives, it banned the concealed carry of those knives. And there were only a few of those. It wasn't a broad-based ban on possession of certain types of knives, but they're saying that that is a historical analog. Well, it isn't, because the, the, the reason that they banned those and, the, and how they banned those are completely different from uh, the way they're banning se modern semi-automatic rifles, modern sporting rifles. So that's not a legitimate historical analog, but some courts will stretch it, to try and say that it is, and then give the state uh, the benefit of the doubt, or not the benefit of the doubt, they bend over backwards to give them the the, the authority to, to ban whatever they want to ban. <laughs> I'm smiling because I'm thinking about you trying to ban semi-automatic firearms and magazines that hold more than 10 rounds and all these other things. And as your analog, you use a knife law as if you've got, is, <laughs> is it an assault Bowie knife? <laughs> is, it a, is it a Bowie knife with a 10 cut? I mean, more than 10 cut uh, uh, capability. And so you have to get the 10 cut or less. Point it, that makes no sense whatsoever. I, and I, you know, you mentioned a minute ago that it's nice to have a judge that under that is a firearms owner. I'll just settle for a judge who is not an activist judge who wants to look at the law and apply it as written. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know I, I, where they're coming from is they're sympathetic to people who are victims of gun violence, and so are we all. The, the, the gun ban lobby has no monopoly on empathy or sympathy. You know, we're all parents, sons, daughters, uh, 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 you know, uh, people who don't want ourselves or our families to be unsafe and don't want to see people getting shot and feel horrible when people are. But that doesn't mean that these laws work. They don't work. They don't make us any safer. And that's the big lie that politicians push to try and justify this stuff. The you know, same politicians that are pushing to justify that are the ones that are refusing to uh, prosecute criminals for violent crimes, refusing to keep them in prison or in jail and letting them, this, creating this revolving door system where you have criminals out victimizing people violently. And at the same time, they want to say to the honest law-abiding citizen, uh, gee, you know, we're concerned about gun violence. Those two don't, that math does not work. It, it doesn't that, work in any logical world. And there was some great language in Judge McGlynn's decision where he talked about, you know, if, if, if you get a call from your wife and she says, there's four bad guys out front and they've all got guns. And here I have a shotgun that holds three rounds or an AR platform that holds, uh, you know, 15 or 20. Which one should I get to fight these guys off? 
You know what I mean? And the state wants to say, your options to defend yourself or your family are limited by our law. And that's not the way the Supreme Court sees it. The Supreme Court sees it as the American people get to vote with their wallet on what guns they want to buy and possess for self-defense. The government doesn't get to second guess that. But, you know, the, some of these judges are very uh, conflicted, torn by uh, the fact that people are getting killed, but they are not recognizing that, yeah, you're taking away the ability to, of people to have that last chance when, 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 the, when someone is attacking you or, or, or a place that you're at, if, if you have a firearm, you have a chance to save your life and the lives of other people. But the, the, the state's position is, you know, you got to rely on the police. And, you know, uh, when seconds count, police are only minutes away. So well, the want- problem with that, Chuck, you know, I'm sitting in our classroom here in Mission Valley where we teach all the time. And one of the things I share with students who have guns for home defense or have concealed carry permits here in California or whatever, is that we have inappropriately named law enforcement first responders. They're right. not. They're second responders. You're the first responder if you happen to be there, and you either have the capability and the training and the willingness to respond, or you don't. And, and your own safety is your own responsibility. We've ceded that to the government, and we've seen how it just simply does not work. You know, the old uh, adage, of, you know, when seconds count, the police are minutes away means that the second responders are minutes away. The first responder better have the capability to defend himself, herself, in and, uh, and their loved ones. Yeah, yeah. And that's, and that's what we're fighting for. That, exactly. The right to be self-reliant, the, the, the right to not to have to depend on the government for your own personal safety. It's, it's, that's what the Second Amendment is all about, along with, you know, militia for tyrannical government in the, uh, in the extreme. But, uh, but the day-to-day Second Amendment right, and it's not just self-defense. That's the other thing the states try and do is say, oh, you, it has to be good for self-defense. And then they try and, they try and argue that be, a gun being used for self-defense means you actually have had to shoot at the bad guy for it to be used. Just having it in your house and being ready to use it for self-defense doesn't count as use. So the, 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 the names, the, 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 the twisting of the language that the government's, not, a, not just in Illinois, but in all these cases, and but they make no mistake. This is not just about Illinois. Bloomberg and his lawyers are writing templates to push assault weapon laws and magazine capacity limitations all across the country as part of their vindictive response to Bruin. They don't like that ruling, and they want to do everything they can to uh, pass as many laws as they can that we just have to keep challenging uh, because they, they don't want their power taken away. They want us to be reliant on government. Well, Chuck, is there anything that we didn't chat about that we should? Uh, well, there, there, the, the question with Illinois is whether there's going to be a stay and whether or not the injunction will be blocked from taking effect. The state will be asking for one. I think this weekend, though, we're going to have something akin to Freedom Week in Illinois, where people will be buying these magazines and these rifles because the state's not going to be able to get into court fast enough to enjoin it before the weekend, unless looking at all the things coming in from courts uh, on my, on my email screen, you know, they may try. So, but if they don't get that injunction stayed, then it's in effect. And and I think the dealers in Illinois are planning to sell a lot of guns and magazines this weekend. Thank you very much again for watching the entire interview. Now, this was the first part, the first segment of that interview, because it went quite long when we talked about some other things. So I will put those other segments up in the next few days. Keep an eye out for those. There probably will be three of them in total. So thank you again very much for all of your support here. I really do appreciate it. If you'd like to support the channel, you can do that by taking a class over at Practical Defense Systems here in San Diego. That's the company that I own and how I actually make a living. If you want to support the channel directly, you can do that by going to gunguytvcrew.com. Or if you're already on Patreon or Locals, just search for Gun Guy TV. You'll find Gun Guy TV Crew. You can join the crew and you'll have access to me and all of the ex- exclusive content that I put on those platforms that you can't find anywhere else. So check it out, gunguytvcrew.com or on Patreon or Locals. In the meantime, wherever you go, whatever you do, stay safe.